Hello, my name is Vanessa. Welcome to Ortho Refresh. This video reviews a short arm splint, also called a volar splint. This is appropriate for distal radius fractures, injury to the carpus, intercarpal ligaments, or acute injury to the wrist where initial x-rays appear negative, but there is edema, ecchymosis, or pain. This will give great support for the wrist, but allow for finger and elbow motion. Enjoy. A ready-made splint, scissors, 2-inch padding, tape, and 3-inch elastic bandage. Tear off some pieces of tape so they are within reach at the end of the splint. Then open the elastic bandage. Some packages have a red dotted line in the middle. Twist to open the plastic. It's much easier to take off. I recommend taking those sharp clips and throwing them in the garbage. They tend to hurt people. To begin, position the patient in a comfortable seated position. This could be at a desk with the arm resting on the tabletop or on top of a gurney or exam table with pillows under the arm for support. Advise the patient to point fingers toward the ceiling and thumb towards the shoulder to keep the forearm in neutral position. Start with the padding around the wrist. This will keep you from messing or fussing with the end of the padding. Then work your way toward the palm tearing from the bottom to go through the first web space. Notice the padding ends about the distal palmar crease. This allows for the MCP joints to be free. Come back around the hand and through the first web space again. Now we have two layers of padding in the palm and we work our way proximal, overlapping by 50%. The forearm is a cone shape. It is easier to wrap the padding on an angle than to go straight around. We want two layers of padding in the hand and forearm and about three to four layers of padding at the ends to avoid the splint rubbing on the skin. About one to two inches from the antecubital fossa, go around and around and around until you have about three or four layers of padding. Next, create a cuff to add layers in the palm. Take a piece and fold it lengthwise. Wrap this around the distal end of the padding. We now have four layers of padding in the palm. Take another small piece to create a cuff about the thumb. Fold this lengthwise and wrap it around the thumb much like a breast cancer ribbon. Now the padding is complete and we are ready for the splint. Patients tend to move around. Remind the patient to keep fingers toward the ceiling, thumb towards the shoulder. Now you can open the splint and measure from right inside the padding in the palm to just inside the padding at the forearm. Take the edges and pull the cotton padding up over the fiberglass splint. Get the splint wet. Cold water will help this set faster. Wring out as much water as possible. Place the splint inside a towel. Fold the towel over and use the towel to wring out any extra water in the padding. I call this the burrito trick. Holding the elastic bandage in my left hand, I unroll it a little. About four to five inches in, I make a cut. This will go in the first web space. Place the splint in the palm and volar forearm. Sometimes it's tricky to get everything in place, so I ask the patient to help hold the splint. That cut goes in the first web space. I tend to fold my edges so they don't fray. Tucking in the end, I begin to unwrap the ace wrap with about 50% tension. If I go through the web space again, I make a cut from the bottom. Bring that through the web space, avoiding any pressure in the web space as that can cause injury to the digital nerves. I'm not pulling too hard, 
again about 50% tension, overlapping by 50% as I wrap the rest of the splint. We try to just use one ace bandage, so if you don't make it all the way, back up and try to spread out your wraps. So that we just use one elastic bandage for a short arm splint. Use tape to secure the end. Then I create smaller pieces of tape to go through the web space and around the hand to hold all the edges and corners in place. And it keeps the patient from messing with it most of the time. I call this tape art. You can get creative. Because the splint is hard on one side, it allows for swelling to fluctuate. I make sure the wrist is in a neutral position, not ulnar or radially deviated, pronated or supinated. I use my thinar eminence to mold the splint into the palm. It is not necessary to do any other squeezing or molding. All right, thanks for watching. I hope that video was helpful for you. If you are interested in seeing more, please hit subscribe. Ortho Refresh wants to be a tool in your tool belt as you care for patients. If you have any questions, please leave those below. We will get back to you as soon as we can. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up. Ortho Refresh is on Instagram and Facebook. Please check us out there. We wanna have an interactive conversation. We wanna know what do you need to hear about? What do you want to be refreshed on? Ortho Refresh aims to provide continuing orthopedic education at your fingertips. Thanks for watching.